voted in the caucus. It, uh, it, it was just, it was pathetic. And the same thing with Iowa. What do you do? You go get people off the street, put them in the bus, put them in a hotel, feed them, and run them into the country. Is this democracy? And then if you don't do that, turn around and spend all this money uh, getting people to vote in a small state, and uh, so you buy your way into it. This is democracy. If, if the electoral process that was, that was what we're doing here were done in, in Russia, We'd be pointing our fingers and laughing at how undemocratic Putin is in Russia. And in point of fact, Putin and China are doing a better job than we are in the form of governance of their people today. Uh, how do we handle the fact that like, the media's coverage of all these events is like, it's so slanted to the right that people like Hillary Clinton are talked about as like, liberal? When in fact, you know, she's like the <laughs> furthest thing, you know, she's a fairly conservative in terms of the world spectrum of political views. And like the issues are debated, like when Hillary Clinton suggested in that one debate that it's possible that she would support like the illegal driver's license, the uh, outrage over how liberal she is if she admits to that. And Obama, like a news report today, Obama is the most liberal senator in the Senate. And like these people are discussing, they're far from being anywhere close to the left. Like, America doesn't really have a legitimate left wing. How do we handle that? And the fact that the media keeps it. Well, the media is, first off, you have to understand the media is controlled by five corporations. Mm -hmm. And so they determine what information the American people get. The media is who's controlling this electoral process. They've determined, here, Obama is totally, totally the creation of Time Warner. The, and, if you, and if you want to figure out how, why, the head of Time Warner was a black person. I don't fault him from using his power to want to make a black person president. The problem is he picked a person who's very inexperienced and who doesn't have any substance. If they're very bright, no question about that, but you've got to have some substance. And so that's what the media has been doing to you. How do you overcome that? I don't know. The only thing I know is is that you want to empower the American people. That's where the, where the change can take place. And, it, and that means that people will have to reason it out. Can we do that? I don't know. And if we can't, then the United States is history. It'll go the way of Spain. Spain, you know, was the superpower of the world at the time. They had all this money that they got the gold from the Western Hemisphere. And you know what they became experts in? Just what we're becoming experts in. We're experts in weaponry. And that's what we want to export, weaponry. So ex Spain became experts in making swords. They had the <coughs> finest swords in the world. The Spanish rapier was it. And of course, that was it. That's all they had to export. And the world went right on by. And so you had the Dutch that developed their empire. And then they went on by. Then the British Empire. And then, of course, now the American Empire. And our empire is history within this generation. Within this generation, we are history. Now, the tragedy is <coughs> is not, because I, I don't get carried away with the fact that we're, you know, our history is going to be over. It's the fact that we're missing the opportunity to provide leadership on the, on the global environmental problem. And since there's nobody strong enough to provide that leadership, that means that we're going to lose 25, 50 years, and it may be too late. By that time, we may put the, the human race off this planet. I like to think of the uh, artists, you know, are people who conjure up a future that we don't yet understand rationally. That's what art is all about. Think of the person. Now, I can think of it when I was a kid. We had comic books. And in the comic books, we had Superman. Think of Superman, how Superman started. It was the planet Krypton. It was self-destructing. And so they had to take this little baby and put this little baby in the, uh, this missile and shoot it out to another planet. And, that's, and that was the survival of Krypton, was to get, send this kid out, Superman. And of course, the Superman came from a planet that has self-destructed. I don't know what we're going to do if we're going to be able to send somebody out to another planet 
that we ought to start increasing the NASA budget because we're not doing very well otherwise. The next and question they're going to be asking is about <coughs> experience between the two candidates. Experience? Between the two. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me speak to the experience between the two candidates. Obama has none. He was, he was six, uh, six years or eight years in the state senate of Illinois. Now that's substantial experience. Now what I don't understand is he voted present on a number of issues. Now I was on a, on a panel with one of his supporters in Congress. And he said, well, it was the now group that told him to vote present because they were opposed to that legislation. <coughs> I found that very bizarre. I've been Speaker of the House in Alaska, and when you oppose legislation, you vote no. So what's this voting no. present? Do you know anything about this? When in the in the first interview when he was talking about that, the first Democratic debate, he was asked about the same issue with a significant chunk of the state House votes where he voted present, and he said it was it was a it's a symbolic measure of showing that lot in many cases there were bills that he was supportive of and knew would pass, but it was a way of showing dissent because there might have been a particular portion of the bill or a particular line item in the bill that you showed issue with. And if it was going to pass, it was it's more symbolic measure than anything else. No, it's not. It's cowardice. I'll, I'll tell you, I've been a legislator. Okay. How, many, how many Democratic senators or any senator would love to hide from voting on abortion issues? You don't think that, I mean, anybody I know would, would want to vote on that. Why? You're going to be attacked in the next election one way or the other. One way or the other, somebody's going to attack you on that issue. How can they attack you if you vote present? <clears throat> it's called cowardice. It's a little bit like the enemy's attacking you and you refuse to shoot your gun at the enemy. you got to shoot your gun. You're paid to vote. You're not paid to sit there and be present. You're paid to vote. Now. When, when the person told me that now had instructed him, see, you, you got one story, I heard another story. Well, this is, and I don't, obviously, you know more did about you, wait, this. No, did you hear from him? He said that that's what. This is what I heard him say during what? the. What? Okay, well, then the I heard a congresswoman who was supporting him say, well, they were instructed by now to vote present because they were opposed to the legislation. Well, if you're opposed to the vote, so you vote no. I mean, this isn't complicated. You vote no. It's a bad piece of law. You vote no. And I don't care if there's a good line in the law. How would they handle being uh, dealing with the country? Well, you don't have to be the CEO of a major business to deal with this country. Uh, I have been bankrupt, and uh, what's his name, uh, Tim Russert, you know. So how could you run the country if you've been bankrupt? Of course I've been bankrupt. I've been bank bankrupt. I had a bad health year. But let me point out to you that we had one of the very unusual presidents in this country was bankrupt. His name was Harry S. Truman. We had another person who was a failure uh, in many respects, and that was Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> FDR was not a very successful person in business enterprise. So this idea that you've got to be here, to be successful in a business enterprise, you have to have a good streak of greed. Now, to be successful in government, you have to have a good streak of public service. They don't match. And so if you're telling me that you have to have a good streak of greed to run this country, I gotta tell you, we're in trouble. Now, we got a person that may run, and that may be the mayor of New York, and he's a good manager. Well, maybe we could hire him to be the city manager of the, of the country. But as far as having a sense of foreign policy, a sense of understanding what needs to be done, I question that. I question that. Now they're asking about whether or not, uh, 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 they're asking Clinton whether or not uh, the endorsement from Kennedy, how does that make her feel? And is that something that's, some, it, the reason he it wants to make a change, how does it make her feel? Getting out of you know, the difference between the two candidates. Change doesn't doesn't make any difference at all. Ken Here, Kennedy is for change. <laughs> let me let me explain something to you. If if you go if you're a political person and you have a 30-year career and your ideology doesn't change in 30 years, what does that mean? It means that you didn't experience anything in 30 years. I like Ted Kennedy. We were never 
never very friendly. Uh, and I don't think he's the, the brightest 